Well, good morning. What a joy. Good morning, everybody. Wow. What a joy to have you all with us today. We're absolutely thrilled that you've been able to come along to church again. If you are a regular uh, with uh, us as a family, then we are delighted to see you again. Uh, it is half term. Some people have had the audacity to decide that they're going away. How dare they? But uh, we are thrilled if you're here for the first time, then we are delighted that you are with us uh, this morning and trust you're going to have a great time uh, uh, during our time together. We are delighted, thrilled, very excited to have with us a lot of guests who have come all the way from Penzance. They are sat over this side. 
No, they've heard that, I'm sure, many times before. They are not the Pirates of Penzance. No, although the Pirates do meet there once a year, don't they, for a big gig that you have down there, but, which is great. But we are delighted. They came on Friday night. They've been here for the weekend at Mendip. They've been doing all kinds of activities. Uh, you wouldn't have thought when you came this morning that the church had been kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, given over to 30 young people, and yet it's in pristine condition. Uh, you know, so they know how to do a lot of good housekeeping, and we're very, very pleased about that. So, and I trust that they've had a great time with us. And also, uh, we uh, have the pastor and uh, his wife, Jo, from uh, Dan and Jo, who are from uh, uh, Penzance, uh, and really excited that they're going to be sharing. Dan's going to be preaching a little bit later on. We're going to be doing a little bit of an interview with him, because uh, there was uh, once no church down there with regards to an Elim church. They pioneered it, and a team of them went to Pioneer a few years ago, and I think it'd be great just to hear a little bit about that story, and uh, how that church has emerged and is growing uh, and it's a wonderful place uh, to visit uh, and a great church. I had the privilege of being there just a few months ago and had a wonderful time amongst the community. So we're looking forward to Dan sharing a little bit later on. Anyone tired? It's kind of, wow, well, yes, yeah, a lot of people tired. But you know, we've come together today to worship. Uh, and you know, uh, it is my heart's desire that as we come into the presence of God, that His presence would come, and that we would just be lifted up and encouraged and inspired. And in a moment, uh, we're going to be inviting the team just to come and lead us uh, to, to do that. I love worshiping Jesus. I love saying thank you for, uh, you know, uh, all that you have done. Last week, we spoke about radical generosity. And really, we can only be radically generous after we've understood how He has been generous to, to us uh, in the way that he has given his, his life. And, uh, but I just want to give a few little notices just while we're all here. Uh, and uh, it's important that these, uh, you know, this information gets into your, not into your head, but also into to your hearts as well. On, fr on, on Friday, you know that we had um, a, a Thanksgiving service, a funeral service for, for Dominic. Uh, and I wanted on behalf of the whole family just to say thank you to all of you who helped uh, on that occasion. Uh, it, it was... It was an opportunity where we celebrated and gave thanks for Dominic's life, but also an opportunity where we obviously presented the gospel, and, and, and the gospel went out, uh, and people heard, and it was as positive an experience as it could be for what it was. Uh, so I wanted to say thank you to the church for, uh, you know, the way that you conducted yourself on that day. It was, um, it was lovely, uh, and, and thank you for your willingness to serve and to come alongside the family. Um, you know, uh, those kind of occasions are, are never easy, but you now it's all often after the event that we need to be extra caring for those who are connected to what has happened. And so that's going to be our heart and our desire as a church as we journey forward. This week's a very exciting week for us. Uh, I, I, there aren't many churches that have skate parks, but we have our own mobile skate park, and uh, which is really exciting. Uh, and uh, I know that Andy is probably already, Andy's not here. If he is, I'll be amazed. You know, but he's down there setting it all up, I'm sure. And we, we have already got hundreds of people booked on. In fact, we've probably just about broken even already before we've even started with regards to that outreach. And uh, if you are available and you can go down to the campus, it's down at Morrison's, that side. If you can help and you just want to go down and support in some way, they would love to see you. If you want to skate as well, you can book in and you can do that uh, also. But let's really pray that that would be a positive time. It's not just a skate park. It's an opportunity where we are building bridges to the local community. And uh, we are delighted that we've got a team from the church that are going to be down there all through the half term. Monday to Friday, it's going to be on. Uh, and we would love to see you down there uh, at some point to support. That would be fantastic. Also, uh, We've been blessed by having a lot of new folk to the church over the last few months. And uh, on the 25th of February, we're having a, another newcomer's lunch. That's basically, if you're here, you know, over the last two or three months, four months, whatever it is, and you want to know who we are, what we're about, where we're going, we, we invite anybody who's new to the church just to come, explore, have, have some food together. Most of the New Testament is all about food, thank God. You know, it's a great thing. Eating together is fabulous. So we eat together, we chat and talk, and that's on the 25th, directly after the service. We would love for you to come to that, and you just need to see myself or Neil or write your name 
uh, on the list uh, at the back. There's a little sign up where you can write your name so that we can know for catering purposes. We would love for you to come. That's designed for you if you're new to the church. And just lastly, just for today, we're continuing the Alpha course tonight at six o'clock here in the building where we again, we have lots of fabulous food. Uh, it really is a delight to come together and have that. And there's also a prayer gathering that we will be having in the back there whilst the Alpha is on. And that's both at six o'clock this evening. Okay, so that's, that's fantastic. I'm going to read from the Bible. I'm going to invite the team up now just to get ready to lead us in a time of, of worship, uh, which we're going to do in just a moment. Uh, but I was impressed by Nehemiah. Nehemiah, uh, in the midst of the hard work of rebuilding, in the midst of the hard work of life and grafting, and some of you are there, aren't you? Uh, and uh, he, he, he says these words in the midst of uh, building the walls. He says to the says to the gathered folk, he says, stand up and praise the Lord, your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name. May it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything. He gives life this morning to each one of us. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven, they worship you. Thank you, Lord, this morning that you are the giver of life. Thank you that right now your presence is here. Not because we say it, but because you have been faithful and you are true to your word that you will never leave us. And that right now, wherever we are from, from Penzance, from Western, however we've arrived in this place for the first time, or we've been here many times before, you are the God who gives life to all. We pray now for life. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And you have come that we might have life abundantly and life to the full. As we worship now, as we lift our voices and as we lift our hands to you, may your Holy Spirit just be in this place. May the fragrance of Jesus just be all around. We want to waste time with you today. We just want to be in your presence. The God who heals and restores and renews is who you are. But we just want to sit at your feet and say, Jesus, be glorified and honored. Come, giver of life today. Breathe into us life afresh in Jesus' name. Let's stand together and let's worship the Lord this morning with gladness. Hallelujah.
generations falling down in worship, sing the song of ages to the
Let's just continue to worship Jesus. Paul is going to declare to us the one thing he wanted in life. He says these words. But for whatever, whatever was my gain, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Paul is exclaiming, you are all I want. There's nothing that I desire in this life more than you. He goes on to say, I want to know Christ. I want to know Him, yes, to know the power of His resurrection participation in his suffering becoming like him in his death so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead this one thing I then do forgetting forgetting what is behind straining towards what is ahead I press on I press on that's the goal the prize to which God has called me heavenward you're all I want you are the goal. You are my ambition. You are all I want. Let's sing that softly now. You're all I want. Let's allow that to build as a crescendo as we just say to Jesus, you're all I want in this life. Everything else in comparison to you is wood, hay, and stubble. I want to know you. I want to go further. I want to go higher. I want to go deeper. I want to go up the mountain with you. I want to be lost in the spiritual uplands of God. You're all I want. Is our 
like to you, Jesus. Who can compare to you? Ah, you are the one. You are the way. You are the highest of the highest. Your train fills the temple. No one compares to you, morning star. You are the holy one. <laughs> you are the one who is risen from the dead, the first and the last. really had a sense that Jesus the healer was in the room. Um, there's different facets of, of our Lord, King, friend, saviour, brother. But I really felt that the Lamb of God who bled is here. And the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. And I don't know what you have, maybe physical, mental, but I feel that there's an act of faith that we can step out and reach out to him for healing for our bodies, for our mind. And if that's you, I want you just to come before the Lamb, come before Jesus, who is in the center of the universe. John says that he sees a Lamb sat on the throne, a slain Lamb, and in that lamb's body is its blood. So the blood of Jesus is in the center of this universe. And if you need healing today, by faith you receive your healing. By faith we ask Jesus. We ask for your blood to cover us. We ask for your stripes who heal us, Lord. So take heart, take hold of that healing if that's you. Take hold, and we declare by your stripes, you are healed under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just, let's just continue to think and just press into that. He is the Lord that heals. So Lord, continue your work now heal, restore, bring hope, renew hearts, Lord, but bring that healing that needs to happen right now. Do it, Lord, we ask, not because we ask, but because, Lord, it's for your glory. It's for your glory. Touch lives, Lord, now. Come, Holy Spirit, do that work that only you can do. Just do that work that only you can do. We call out in faith in the name of Jesus, in body, mind, and spirit, I am the Lord that healeth thee. We declare it, we proclaim that you are the God who heals. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In these moments as well, I just, uh, as we just continue to receive from the Lord, let's just uh, be mindful of those around us. We think of a world in turmoil, a world that is broken. And it's not just overseas, but it can be right where we are, broken lives. We ask God now not just to bless us and to heal us, but we look outwardly. We see a broken world and we say, Lord, have mercy can't continue on as normal as wars are raging around us. Oh Lord, Prince of Peace, have mercy in Palestine. Have mercy in the Ukraine. Have mercy in the Yemen. Have mercy in the Congo. Have mercy in Myanmar. Have mercy, Lord, in civil wars. 62 civil wars happening in our world today. Conflict abounds. Let your church, Lord, be what your church was meant to be. They are the peacekeepers. 
the, the way of peace. We ask for your church, Lord, everywhere, Lord, where there is conflict, Lord, to bring peace, Lord. And right back home into Western, Lord, we ask, Lord, this church and the church in Western to be the arms and the hands of Jesus. We ask, Lord, in Penzance also, Lord, that the church there would be the extended arm of grace and mercy to a community that needs you. Oh, Lord, our Lord, we cry out to you. Have mercy. Thank you for your presence, Lord, now. Thank you that we can worship the living God who was dead but is alive forever and ever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Let's just give him thanks. Woo. Hallelujah. Wow. It's great to be able to worship the Lord, and we can do that in so many different ways, obviously with our lives, but also with our voices, with our hands raised. Um, in a moment, so just after I'm just going to interview just uh, uh, Dan, there's going to be an opportunity for the children to go to the HD Kids, and then we have a, all of our young people will go upstairs, but that will happen in just a moment uh, as uh, Dan uh, then uh, comes to preach a little bit later on. But I wanted to invite Dan just to come, uh, and um, we're going to give you a, a microphone. I think this one, we're going to go for number, not number, yellow. There you go. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Dan, I've known Dan for a long time. He was just telling me the other day that he's now 50. He's joined the club. But, uh, just tell us, <laughs> what is, what's it like to feel 50, that epoch of an age? Well, just having slept on an airbed for two days, I feel old, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so really old. Really old. So what's, what's your experience been like? Over the last two days, yes, you have come here, you've slept on an airbed. Have you had an amazing time? Tell us what you've been doing. So, yeah, we've had a fantastic time. Actually... I want to start by saying thank you to all of you for uh, allowing us to use your building and welcoming us and being so amazing. And you've made us, some of you have made cakes for us, some of you have bought pizzas for us, and you've cleared up after us. So we want to say thank you. <laughs> That's how tired they are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got here Friday night and uh, we uh, kind of just uh, spent the evening just getting sorted. And then uh, yesterday morning we had a little walk along the pier. We haven't got a pier in Penzance, but uh, it was nice to do that. And then we went axe throwing in the afternoon. Anybody been axe throwing? Yeah, it's at Mendip Activity Centre. Yeah, yeah. We did frisbee golf. Then we came back here. We've had pizzas. We had a little worship time last night. Christy came and spoke, which was fantastic last night. And... Uh, Late night film, and then here we are. Here we are. Now, I know what time is going to elude us very quickly, and it's great that you're all here, and it's great to have all the guys from all kinds of backgrounds and, you know, joining us uh, this weekend. But tell us very briefly, how, how is it that you ended up in Penzance? Why did you go there? You were, you were the, uh, you know, at Derby. Dan was at the same church that I was at, you know, as an, as an assistant minister. And youth, were you a youth pastor as well? We were both youth pastors in the same church. Uh, which was quite ironic, but then you know you decided to step out. Why? What, what did you step out to do? Where did you go, and why did you do it? Yeah, so I uh, I went to Derby in 2002. You were my predecessor, but one. Yes. In between us was the really successful one, but we don't <laughs> talk about Mark. Um, and uh, stayed there until uh, 2010, and just felt kind of God. Just you know, you just feel that stirring from the Lord of just uh, something a changing, mm. and uh, I wasn't quite sure what it was, and just really was seeking God. Joe and I, my wife's here, Joe, and uh, our children, we got three girls and they were fairly young at the time, and just really seeking God about it and just felt God drop a word into my heart about planting a church in Cornwall. We have a bit of a connection to Cornwall. Joe's from Cornwall originally. And uh, I just said to Joe one day, what do you think about ch church planting in Cornwall? And she was like, yeah, it's a great concept. Love it as an idea for other people. And uh, then I was like, no, no, us. And she was like, yep, yeah, that's it. And so we uh, we packed up our house and we moved to Penzance. If you don't know your Cornish geography, Penzance is the last town right down at the bottom, about eight miles from Land's End, near St. Ives. St. Michael's Mount is in the bay in front of us. Uh, beautiful, also though it's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a very poor area. Um, the bits you see on holiday are not the bits where people live. Um, and so uh, high house prices, low salaries, all that kind of stuff. I guess maybe a bit like Western, I don't know. 
Um, you know, holiday towns are often quite similar to each other, aren't they? And, uh, and so we moved there in tw- back end of 2010, started the church with Liz, who's here. Um, she came from Derby, and her husband, who's back in Penzance at the moment, leading worship for us. And there's another couple as well who are with us. And uh, we planted the church, and uh, it's still there. It's which still is there. amazing. And it's not only still there, but we went, and it was thriving and growing. But can you just give us a glimpse? You know, to get to that thriving and growing part, is it easy planting a church? No, so of the last sort of 12 or 13 years, um, kind of 11 of them were just slow, hard slog with not a lot going on really, with very few people around. And then the last couple of years, it's, it's grown, which has been really good. So uh, yeah, it, but it's, it's been good overall. We've had good, we've enjoyed it. It's been a great experience, loved it. Um, and there's times when it's hard, there's times when you turn up and there's hardly anyone there. And, uh, and then the kids go out and you preach to like three or four people. Um, they, they were good times. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, and it just changes. So what was basically a home group at the beginning um, kind of then morphs into something a bit different. And now, uh, yeah, we are where we are now. I mean, it's a fantastic journey and we could have asked more questions. But, um, you know, uh, and as you, as you look at the future, do you think, just one more question, do you think church planting is the future? Do you, do you think, you know, that's something that we should all be thinking as churches, you know, th- that we should be involved with? Yeah, I mean, when we planted, we, we wanted to plant a church that plants churches, and we haven't really done that yet, but we still think maybe that will be something that comes. I think there's so many people out there that don't know Jesus, have never heard of Jesus in any meaningful way, and we've just got to find different ways to reach people. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you know, I think church planting is a really important part of that, as is the ministries of existing churches working side by side. Fantastic. Well, we're going to be looking forward to hearing you preach in just a second. And uh, so let's give him a round of applause. Fantastic. That's great. Um, just while he's getting his Bible and getting himself ready, just to, uh, just to say that all of our children, and now this is a good moment for the children to go to their different places. And if you're a young person, you are welcome to go upstairs. You can stay in the service if you would like, but the young people are going to go upstairs. Let's give them all of a round of applause. Look at that. We like a messy church. Well, not that they're messy, but they're wonderful. But uh, so they're all going to go, and whoever was on our Sunday school upstairs, you've got a big problem now. You know, so Katrina, I think Katrina's on. Oh, no, Christy's on as well. That's that's great, fantastic. Don't you love church? That's got so many young people just wandering around. I just love it. I don't know what do you call a load of young people. Is it a gaggle? Trouble. Trouble? <laughs> Unbelievable. There you go, trouble. Right. Well, without further ado, we're going to welcome Dan, who's going to come and just preach and just give us the word this morning. So, Dan, come and be at liberty and be at ease as you come and share God's word. Amen. Come on. Fantastic. Should also say it's great to see Richard and Katrina Goatley as well. Richard and Katrina were with us in Penzance for several years. When they first moved over from Jersey, they came and joined us in Penzance and uh, then spent a few years with us. So it's really great to see them and the kids. Um, just to intro me a little bit, so I've already said I'm married to Joe. I've got three daughters. Um, our eldest, Ellie, got married last summer and is now the youth pastor in Reading, Elim Church. Uh, my middle daughter, Tally, is at uni in Cardiff, but has popped down to see us for the weekend, um, because it's not too far, and our youngest daughter, B is year 11, and uh, she's here with us on the weekend. So uh, that's that's who we are. Um, I just want to share a few thoughts uh, this morning with you from Ephesians, uh, Ephesians' letter in the New Testament. If uh, you don't know your, your Bibles, it's written by a guy called Paul. It was written in about the year 62-ish AD. Um, i tell you what I should also say. You see these people here at the front? They're like the leaders on the youth weekend. I want you to look at them, and if any of them start falling asleep, you've got to shout at them, all right, because they're tired, but they have no permission to sleep.